In this video, I'm gonna talk about why we need blockchain technology in the middle of a crisis, just like the one we find ourselves in right now. I'm talking about the global coronavirus pandemic and the accompanying financial crisis that has accompanied it. I wanna talk about a benefit that we can gain from using blockchain in this situation uh, as a blockchain developer, but it may not be what you think. So really quickly, if you're new around here, hey, I'm Gregory from DAP University, and on this channel, I teach you how to become a blockchain master. So if that's something that you're interested in, then click the like button down below and click subscribe. And if you wanna become a blockchain developer, I can show you exactly how to do that step-by-step -step over at dappuniversity.com forward slash bootcamp. All right, so why do we need blockchain in the middle of a crisis like the one we find ourselves in right now? Well, there's one big benefit that we can get out of blockchain technology, and that's censorship resistance. Well, basically, I mean the ability to say whatever you want, free speech, uh, without being banned or you know shadow banned by a certain platform. And we're seeing a lot of censorship happen right now on major social networks. Basically, people who are expressing their views about the pandemic that are different from the views of the people who control the platforms, a lot of these people are being censored. Their posts are just getting removed entirely. In some cases, like uh, entire blog posts are getting taken down, videos are getting demonetized. They're basically getting banned or shadow banned from these platforms. Now, I totally understand the justification of the platforms, right? Their view is that we know what's best and this information that this person is you know, putting out there is potentially harmful to other people especially in the middle of this pandemic. If you're putting bad information out there that says, hey, this is not a threat to you and it actually is a threat to you, then well, that's bad for everyone. I, I understand the reasoning. But at the same time, there actually is a broader conversation happening about what the best course of action is in the middle of these events. You know, for example, different countries are taking different approaches. Here where I am in the United States, you know, there are federal laws, but then the states are handling things differently. And one state may not be handling it the same as the next. And a lot of the shutdowns happen at the state level or the city level themselves. So even in these situations, like case by case, there's some disagreement. But even beyond that, there are people who are questioning like whether the measures that are being taken are actually necessary. Are they too far? Are they overreaching? And these are the types of people that are basically being censored from these platforms. Now, I'll be clear. I'm not necessarily weighing in on my personal views on who's right about this. Like, are the measures being taken necessary or are they overreaching, right? That's not my goal in this video. In fact, I hope everyone watching this video is staying safe and healthy. But I do worry about a potential problem this creates, right? If these social networks, these massive platforms that so many people are listening to, if they're able to just shut down anything they don't like, they're effectively able to just control conversations completely and can control thought. And is that a good thing, right? Does that pose a threat to free speech on the internet? Is there a long-term cost that's not being factored in here? So me personally, I lean towards the free speech side of things. Again, that's just my opinion. I would way rather you know people be able to say what they want to say without risk of being banned on a platform. Um, but the question is, can we use the blockchain instead to create alternatives that allow people to do this? All right, so that's what we're going to explore. So uh, I'm going to pull an example up here of one of the articles that was censored recently, all right? So this is an article that was posted to Medium that got 2.65 million views and 5.5 thousand claps in 24 hours. And Medium just took it down instantly for policy violations, all right? So the article was basically criticizing the re reaction to the pandemic, saying, are we being hysterical? Is this an appropriate response, right? And I'm not weighing into my views on this again, like full disclaimer here, right? I, I don't know the author. Um, I've seen lots of criticism on the data that's in the article. I'm not saying it's a good article necessarily. I'm not saying it's a bad article, but it blew up to millions of views overnight and the platform decided to just take it down, just instantly take it down. So was that the right approach, all right? And you know, you can also see like it got posted on a different website. And of course, Twitter gives you a warning for going to these types of things. And you know, they'll give you reasons like it could steal your password or give you malicious um, information, could spam you. But they, they can basically just give you sort of BS reasons and effectively just censor your things that they don't like and hide them. You know, it violates their platform rules, right? So again, not an endorsement of this article necessarily, but the real question is, is this the right approach? Should you take it down or should you allow it to be a platform where that can actually be a conversation? Like you can see, if you look at it on Twitter, um, one of the top voted tweets basically is a long thread that uh, sort of deconstructs the article or criticizes it line by line, case by case. And that's something that'd be way more effective for you know someone to actually see. 
So could we instead have some sort of censorship alternative uh, where you could say what you wanted to say without fear of being censored, but you also open yourself up to scrutiny, right? Like there's comments, there's discussion where people can pick apart your ideas and then the actual user can look at both things, you know, your original opinion that's not censored and then other people's, um, you know, reaction to your opinion and actually read a conversation because a conversation is a lot healthier than just sort of a top-down approach of, hey, these are the right ideas. You're not allowed to think about anything else that deviates from what we consider right. So could we implement a model like that with blockchain where basically we could take advantage of the immutability of blockchain where you can put information uh, on it that can't be changed, it can't be censored because it's a decentralized network uh, where there's no you know, intermediary who can just you know turn things on and off. And I would love to see the conversation head in that direction, right? So, you know, we've got uh, examples of decentralized social networks already. You know, we've got uh, Steemit, uh, we've got Peepith, right? These are some early examples. I even have a step-by-step -step tutorial that shows you how to build a blockchain-based social network from scratch, all right? So you can check that out if you want to. I'll put a link down in the description below. So can we use the blockchain to accomplish this censorship resistance, all right? Well, that's the big question here, okay? So there are definitely gonna be some hard problems to crack, but they seem like they're worth cracking. And I'd love to see more people in the space focus on this kind of thing, especially right now when we're in the midst of crisis, because you could argue that being in the middle of a crisis is one of the most important times to have free thought, right? Because there's an incentive for people to come in uh, when everyone's scared to death and take advantage of you. And even if we're able to use blockchain to make the problem a little bit better, to me, that's a win, all right? So I'm not so naive to think that everyone's just going to completely flee from the big social networks and start using blockchain instead, like instantly. That's not what I'm saying necessarily. If we could do that, that'd be awesome. But even if we're able to create an alternative that serves a niche use case, that's still a step forward in my book. So that's what I would love to see happen. All right. So I hope you like this video. Again, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Click the like button down below. Um, and if you want to check out that uh, tutorial on how to build a blockchain social network. I'll put the link to that in the video description. Um, but yeah, if you want the comprehensive step-by-step -step plan on how to become a blockchain master, um, you don't have to be a developer already. You don't have to know much about blockchain. Uh, head on over to dappuniversity.com forward slash bootcamp. All right, until next time, thanks for watching Dapp University.